Hello, I'm Annie Sloan and I'm in my studio in Oxford and I'm about to demonstrate to you some great techniques. I'm going to demonstrate a technique which I think is fantastic. I've already done one about painting to make something have lots of texture, that's the frottage one. And now I'm going to do one which gives you a really, it's like the paint has really worn away. It's a different look. There's always many, many ways to achieve this texture. So this one is uh, a, te a technique from this book here, Annie Sloan Paints Everything and I do paint everything. <laughs> I've got this piece here, which is called Warehouse Rustic. Um, and it came about because I go to lots of auctions and, and house sales, etc., etc. And I'd often find a piece of furniture, which actually I think, oh, I'll paint that. And then I'd look, well, actually that's just years of paint that people have stripped and started painting, didn't strip, didn't finish stripping but I thought they were really rather beautiful. So I wanted to achieve that look. So I thought, how can I do it? And then I remembered that sometimes when I'm cleaning something, I will use bleach and I realized that the paint was coming off. Just gently, only a little bit of bleach. And I thought, I wonder if strong bleach, what that would do. So I had an experiment and yes, hey presto, um, it takes paint off. So I thought, let's try and use that. So this is the piece. Um, it's got layers on it. It's got Paris gray, it's English yellow, and little bits of Provence that I just put afterwards. It was a, um, a piece of brown furniture, which had got a lot of, uh, a lot of holes in it, um, gouges in it, a lot of the veneer was missing, and still is bits missing here. But I thought I'd rather like that, but I wanted to give it that look of as if someone had stripped it. It's now one of my favourite pieces. I wanted to show you another um, inspiration for me, and it's in this room here. It's in Sweden, and I love the way that it's the blue and the white, and you, you just get this very random texture and that's what I'm going to try to achieve. So I'm going to use those colours and that is the colours here. I'm going to use Provence and I'm going to use Old White there. So the first colour will be Old White. So now I'm going to paint this. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a, a, a brush with um, good bristles on it. So this is my round brush because I do want some texture in it. I don't want it to be flat. So as usual, I paint upside down, not me upside down, my furniture upside down. That's my joke. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, oh, I could give it a good stir first. And then I'm going to paint it all over. And I'm quite thick. You don't, you don't have to be, and every and paint every which way. Brush marks, a little bit of stippling, um, and really covering it well. Some of this is quite uh, thick, but I'm going to be removing quite a bit of it in various ways with not only the bleach, but also probably um, some scrapers and various other things. So I'm using the smallest of my um, oval bristle brushes and I'm, whoops, I'm dabbing it, covering, but um, sometimes really quite thick and others not so thick, just because what we're after is texture and just a story really for the whole paint. When I say a story, I'm trying to not get everything even. I don't want it even at all. I want it to have that randomness that old painted furniture has. Um, you don't know why something is lighter or paler in one area. It 
could be that the sun had faded it. Um, you just don't know what's happened to it. And that's, I think for me, that's the joy of painted furniture, especially old painted furniture. Uh, it's got, it's got a sort of randomness. It wasn't painted um, in a factory. Um, so this piece of, that I'm doing um, is quite rustic and I think because it's quite rustic it really quite suits this sort of broken up paintwork. I probably wouldn't do this in a very beautiful, um, elegant Rococo piece because I think that's unlikely that someone will try to strip it and half paint it. It just doesn't seem to work that well. Um, and the colours you use are really up to you. I mean, it could be, you know, you've got to have a colour underneath, which could be anything, really. I mean, here I had grey. It was just a combination of colours that I liked. So this is um, Paris grey and yellow, which I, I think is an interesting combo. So this is... It's not going to cover completely. I can see quite a lot of wood showing through. I mean, the grain of the wood, but I think that's fine. Oops. You might notice I'm wearing a an apron because I'm going to be using uh, bleach and bleach will um, not be very kind to my, my fabrics, my clothes. Okay, so that's that. Um, just found a little bit there I didn't quite paint. Um, so it should be all fine from underneath and now I need to leave this to dry and then I'll start working on it. Um, I could even at this point take a little bit where it's um, where it's still wet and maybe work away. Just maybe do that. So that's a way to do stuff which is quite nice. This is a, a metal scraper. And I've just scraped, that's quite nice there where you see the lines of that. Um, anyway, I quite like that. Maybe a little bit there. Um, so I'll wait for this to dry and then I'm going to start doing the bleach. Um, while that's waiting to dry, I'm going to talk to you about the bleach. So um, I didn't realise until I started doing this and teaching it is that um, bleach is many different types of bleach all over the world. Um, not every country sells a bleach like this. Um, this is extra thick, it's called thick bleach. So sm some countries don't have it. Um, so this is, it's not watery, it's quite thick. Um, if you can't get uh, thick bleach, um, what I would use is actually a toilet cleaner and it's extra thick. So I'm using this because I can throw that away later. Um, but uh, you can't use anything like a brush because if you use a brush, your brush will disintegrate because bleach is a real, not very kind to anything. So I'm going to leave this now and I'm not even sure about this and I think that'll be fine. Um, so I'm going to have various tools with me. I'm going to have these sticks they're wooden sticks and it use, it's quite useful for taking stuff off. I've got a couple of these which are scrapers, metal scrapers. Um, you could even have something like that to make a smaller scraping mark. I've got these, this is a rounded one. If you wanted to, you could use gloves. Um, these thin gloves here, that will probably disintegrate fairly quickly, but these big, nice, thick ones would be fine. So this is now all dry and I'm ready to do the really exciting bit, which is applying the bleach to the paint. Um, I'm going to work on the top. I will try to always work on the top because then you don't get bleach dripping. When I did this piece, I did everything flat. I took the, door, uh, the drawers out and did each drawer so it was flat. And I think I turned it on its side so I did the two sides so that nothing drip is, is dripping. So this has been decanted. I'm going to use this to put some in 
it's a, just a cotton cloth that's all and I'm going to start um, and put my glasses on not only can I see but also protects me um, and I'm just going to leave some bleach on there um, I can even do a little bit where it's just blobbed on um, I don't want to take too much off because I'm going to scrape some of this off. I'm going to put blue over it and I'm building layers basically. Um, and it's really good fun. Uh, it's the equivalent of mud pies, I think, for painters. Um, I'm going to do a little bit down the side, um, but I'm going to leave most of it. So I'm going to leave that onto there. Okay, I need that to dry a little. Um, I might do a bit on here. Um, I'm going to do the edges because that is not very smooth wood, it's a very rough piece of furniture. Um, it's quite interesting at the side here, the wood shows through and I think that is actually quite nice um, because it shows you a sort of a different type of layer where the different way the paint is applied. It's just I didn't do it very thickly, but it sort of looks good. Um, and I might just rub that in there a bit. Okay, I think that's that. And then I've got to wait for this to dry off. Um, I'm not going to let it dry off completely because it will start to be acting on there already um, and I'll just see how it's going. So I think I applied this bit first. So that's good, it's coming off quite easily. I'm going to take one of these. Okay. So what's happening now is I'm taking off quite a lot. It's quite similar to when the paint was wet. Um, but what you do get is this mixture of paint. And what I'm going to do is put that back on. So that's quite nice. So you're putting it, scraping it back on um, to lift it. So you've got texture. So um, you might notice that when I scraped off the paint when it was still wet, it looks quite similar to when I scraped off the paint after having put bleach on it. I think that's because of the sort of wood it is. When I did it on this and other pieces I've done where there have been quite a lot of varnish on it, because you had wood underneath, it just scraped the whole thing off. There was no lovely texture. But when I did it with the bleach, you got some lovely texture. So it's really, it's a technique that perhaps not on new wood, but really good, or rather pure wood, but rather better on varnishes. So I'm showing it to you, even though it might look quite similar. So I'm now waiting for this to dry. I think it's more or less dry. It's quite a hot day here, so things are drying quite quickly. So here is my Provence, and that is going to be my next layer of paint. And I'm going to put it on here. Um, and I'm going to choose where I put, oh that's still a bit wet, I've got to choose where I put it because I want to put it on mainly where nothing has been taken off much. Um, on here I've got quite a lot of paint already removed so perhaps there'll be less paint there. And on here, there'll perhaps be more paint. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to leave some of the white underneath, quite a lot of the white showing underneath. I've got it. I've got actually the paint quite thick. You might know that if I leave the lid off my paint, the paint does get really thick. 
and I want this to be quite thick because I want that sort of quite rustic and warehousey feel. By the way, if I want to get that reconstituted and thinner again, all I do is simply add water. And I've got a little bit of texture in the paint as well. So the brush marks are showing all sorts of interesting um, texture. Um, that's a, a, a achieved partly because this paint's really thick and partly because my brush is quite bristly um, and the paint um, allows it to get some nice, nice uh, texture. So that's how it's looking there. So at this point, it's going to look quite blotchy. Don't panic. I always slightly panic at this point because you think this is going to look okay but actually you know it's it will do so that's how it's looking now um, quite patchy looking. I'm going to wait for that to dry, it won't take long, and then I'm going to do again some more um, bleach. So now I'm going to get my bleach. So I'm going to leave that to start working on the paint, so start eating into it. You'll see that um, quite bubbly and I think that's it sort of working on the paint a bit. It's taking a little bit of colour out, it's changed it a little bit. So I've just left everything for about five minutes. Some of it's drier, dry-ish and some of it's really quite wet still. And that's good because I want to get different um, marks here. So here I'm going to mark, uh, wipe this very slowly. I'd already started. I'm going to do that very slowly and just get a little bit off because I want to show the, the, the white underneath. And there I'm going to, just going to smooth that over. It's a little bit showing through. And here I'm going to go really harder and then I'm going to, where I've got some of the blue on there, I'm going to wipe that back on there. So what you can see is now you've got different colours happening which is, I think, beautiful. It's done on its own, really. I think I'm going to put, well, I'm going to do more on the top here. But meantime, I'm going to do some more onto here. How long would you wait for it to dry, you might wonder? Um, I think it's up to the temperature, the ambient temperature. It's hot here today, so it's going to dry quite quickly. Um, I, you've got to play it by ear, really. You've got to start testing a little bit and seeing what it's like. Just try a bit, and if it's, if it's working, then that's fine. Um, if you leave it for too long, of course, it will completely dry, and there's not going to be much you can do with it. That's beautiful. Once it's all dry, of course, it won't steep keep happening. So although you've softened the paint with the bleach, once it's dry, it won't keep working. So don't worry about that. <laughs> it won't be dangerous either. 
Yeah, very pleased with that bit there. That's really nice. That looks so it's really weather beaten. It looks a bit as though it's been out um, on a seafront somewhere. That's really nice. <coughs> I mean, this is something that everybody's got at home. You can easily buy it. It's terribly cheap, and you've probably already got it in your house. So um, I think it does a great, um, a great look. So I've got another colour here, and I'm just thinking, where I did that, what I did was take another colour, and I just dipped it in and went across like that, a little bit like that. Um, I wiped a bit on there, I did a bit on there. It's just to give another colour as if that was another story. A long time ago, there was a little bit of a, another colour. So I might um, maybe do... A little bit down there. I always love Provence and red. I think it looks incredible. So just a little bit in there. I mean, if you don't like it, you can always just paint it up. I quite like that. I think it looks really nice cover up some of it with the old blue the provence leave that one bit in there. I actually quite like that where I've just left one little bit of red in there. Not a lot because it's where they couldn't get rid of it. Which often happens with a piece of furniture. <laughs> so um, that's it. Just a few pointers. To be careful of the, ble the bleach. It's absolutely safe. There's no problem. People use it in their houses all the time. I would just let this now to dry completely and then put the wax on. There's no problem with mixing waxes and bleach, no problem at all, as long as the bleach isn't still wet. And it won't be, it'll dry very, very quickly. So wax it over and that will be gorgeous, just like that one is. And hey presto, a very, very old piece of furniture that has been aged and distressed over the years. Um, thank you for watching and there'll be more about how to give patina and distress looks on other um, videos that I do. Thank you.